I'm working on the restoration of this old Swiss made Shaolin 22 milling machine. The electromechanical joystick to control the feet is severely damaged. In this episode we are going to fix that. First step here is obviously to remove this front panel with the joystick that is attached to it. Several location pins make sure that the joystick is perfectly aligned with the several mechanical interfaces it has behind in the cast iron control cabinet. I have some difficulties to figure out how the thicker tip of the joystick is supposed to come off. The outer aluminium shell is uh, spinning freely and uh, it's not appearing to uh, be threaded on. And the front of the handle has some sort of a screwdriver slot in it, but it doesn't turn at all except with excessive force. Since I don't want to further damage the joystick, I get out the manual and try to understand how it's. Uh, looking inside but the drawings are just too coarse and uh, barely readable. However as soon as I overcame my hesitation to apply some brute force the tip quickly threads out and can remove it. The reason it was so hard to turn is that I had to Turn a bent screw out of a bent thread. The whole joystick assembly is super heavy. Feels like it's made to control a tank. Moving the lever of the joystick either left or right both moves the bar on top clockwise while moving the handle up or down both moves the bar on top counterclockwise which means that the bar on top is selecting whether the table should either be moving sideways or up and down. On the other side of the joystick there are three large holes and three small holes. The small holes are for the ball detents to keep the joystick in either position. Behind the three large holes there is a mechanism to activate three micro switches which are mounted in the control cabinet. Whenever there are springs inside such an assembly I try to be extra careful when disassembling it. Don't want these springs to fly across the room and land in a chip tray full of spiral chips. Disassembling that joystick is the most satisfying thing I did in my workshop in a long time. Everything felt super solid about that thing. And for every part I had to ask myself how many setups they needed to manufacture it 40 years ago. On top of the fascination for the quality of the individual parts, it also seemed that there is a single sequence of steps that you had to go through 
to disassemble it and it wouldn't be possible in any other way. So the whole disassembly almost became like an engineering puzzle that I was super excited to solve. There was another spring-loaded ball hidden inside. I slide this steel plate over it to smoothly remove it. This hole in the exact right spot is another indication that the whole part was probably designed so that the small conical pin could be removed. Thanks you guys at Chablin. Disassembling your machines is such a pleasure. I'm happy that so far it looks like this part and the rod that is still sticking inside it are the only parts which are actually damaged. First wanted to thoroughly clean all the parts, so uh, I prepared a fresh ultrasonic bath. I'm also using a solvent based cleaner here. That's not the first time I'm a bit underwhelmed by the performance of that ultrasonic cleaner. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but my experience so far is that the ultrasonic cleaner is good in making almost clean parts very clean, but very bad in making very dirty parts almost clean. My first attempt at fixing this part is to simply bend it back. My vice is uh, rocking a lot here. That's because it's uh, attached to the bench using one of these height adjustable lifts. They're very convenient to do fine hand filing on the right height, but they're not really made for such brute force type of work. I'm working in very small increments because I cannot really see what's going on underneath the pipe and to make sure that I'm not overshooting into the opposite direction which would cause unnecessary stress for the part. At some point the remaining angle in the part gets so small that it gets difficult to see in which direction to push it so I indicate the high spot with an indicator and then push in the opposite direction. I managed to get the part reasonably straight again. A very small dip remains where the steel was compressed but I hope that won't affect the function of the part. With that done, I can now go ahead to force out the steel rod, which is still sticking inside the part, which was part of the push button mechanism. The last part to remove is a small broken off section of aluminium thread. I'm hammering in an allen bit, essentially turning the piece into a set screw, which I can then turn out. This is how the aluminium head containing the push button was attached to the end of the joystick lever. I'm worried that I have bent that internal thread out of shape. 
the M8 bolt doesn't go in, so I wanted to re-tap that thread. Luckily, I first checked the thread pitch before I went in there with the tap. The thread is not a standard M8, but an M8 by one fine thread, so I would have ruined it with the standard M8 tap. So I leave that thread alone for now. Next, I'm going to straighten the rod, which I pulled out before. For that, I'm using an improvised anvil and the rod straightening tool. The tip looks rough, so I touched it up on the lathe. And while it's in there, I also clean up the surface. The rod still slightly touches the walls of the part, so I will need to get the right size reamer to straighten out the inner walls of the part. But the mechanism to redirect the push button's motion into the small plunger seems to work fine. Concluding this repair, I'm cold bluing the lever as it was before. Next, I'm going to remove all the surface rust overnight with a fresh bath of evaporust. And with that, I have now all parts ready for reassembly of the joystick, which is the exact same sequence you saw before, but in reverse. That repair was straightforward and I'm very happy how it turned out so far. Before remounting the joystick into the mill, I want to clean up that front panel. That tough layer of solidified oil I got to know in the first episode is all over the buttons as well. I give the ultrasonic cleaner another try with the buttons and meanwhile clean up the front panel the old fashioned way. And the results of the ultrasonic cleaning were disappointing again. So I try something new. Okay, now we're talking. This is a 2% sodium hydroxide solution. Sodium hydroxide basically turns oil into soap. These aluminium buttons are the last thing you want to put in sodium hydroxide because it quickly corrodes aluminium. 
but I don't care if the buttons are a bit dull as long as they are clean. Over at the mill I have already fixed the potentiometer. Before I start the machine I get out the multimeter to check whether the micro switches are correctly actuated by the joystick. And there seems to be an issue here. So the cover comes already off again. Actuating the micro switches directly is working fine, so the issue seems to be mechanical. Looking at how deep these holes in the side of the joystick are, I can hardly imagine that this could potentially be working at all. And then I remember the mechanism they used with the micro switch right next to these. There is a small steel ball which acts as an interface between the micro switch and the moving steel rod behind. Probably these steel balls are missing on the joystick. But that's an easy fix because obviously I do have balls of steel. I always keep a small box full of old ball bearings around. They may no longer be fit for purpose as a spindle bearing, but for applications like these, run out is not really critical. The first one's balls were too large, so I try another one. Perfect. Now let's give that joystick his balls back. That looks much more reasonable to actuate these micro switches. But after mounting the front cover back to the cabinet there is now a different issue. Now the micro switches seem to be pressed constantly. However, there are these three spring-loaded cap head screws, which almost look like they are supposed to adjust something. Nice. I repeat that for the other one as well. and for the micro switch of the rapid button. Okay, moment of truth now. Is it going to work? No, it's not. But then there was something. And rapid seemed to be working sometimes, but in the wrong direction. Ok, 
Okay, let's take some more covers off. This is the electromechanic clutch, which uh, couples either the feed motor you see here or the rapid motor on the other side with the single shaft to drive either of the two axes. The clutch seems to work fine, but the feed motor does not seem to be running very steadily and uh, also the speed adjustment does not work. It looks like the motor has to fight some excessive resistance somewhere. But then out of nowhere it started working, but still not consistently. And I also noted that when the joystick is in the neutral position, the x-axis still is coupled with the feed motor. Only if I select either up or down, the x-axis is freely moving. The rod you see me moving here is actuated by the joystick. There is a neutral position where both the X and the Z axis are moving freely. But with the joystick mounted and in neutral, this does not translate to the rod being in neutral position. There is a small offset somewhere, but no obvious way to adjust it. So overall there is some progress. I'm still far away from a functional milling machine. Despite the unreliable power feeds, I was still able to take another couple of measurements to sort out any excessive wear. And this gave me confidence to move on with the project. In the next episode, we will go all in and also find a way to adjust the offset between the axis selection rod and the joystick. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.